Hey guys, it's Spooky here from Gigi's Fabric Shop and Home of Juki Junkies, and we have a really awesome video for you guys today. So we saw how well you guys, uh, how well the video did for the uh, common accessories for bag makers that we put together for you guys for the TL machines. So if you have a TL machine, don't worry, you can check the description of this video right now and there'll be a link there for you so you can watch the video covering the accessories for the TL machines. Um, but this video is gonna be the common bag accessories I would recommend to somebody who maybe owns like the DX7, the F600, the DX2000, um, and some other maybe higher up machines like the DX7 and things like that. I mean the uh, NX7 and the DX3000 and 4000. So if you have a computerized machine, you are in the right place. But if you have the TL, check the description below. So we're going to cover some of those accessories um, and I'm going to show you what they do and why they're so extra special. Thank you so much for being here today. You want to make sure you subscribe to our channel. We do post every Sunday at 5 p.m. Um, so if you subscribe, you'll get the notifications. Give us a little like, comment below what you love about your computerized machine because they are pretty spectacular. So let's jump into all the goodies I have on the table. So here is my table of goodies. I just want to cover really quickly what to expect out of this video. We're going to talk about some presser feet that are going to just change the game in ba bag making for you guys. I'm going to show you how to install the spool holder that goes in the back side. And we're going to talk about some needles today because needles are really important when it comes to bag making. And I'm going to show you this really cool area magnifier that's just going to really magnify your area, especially if you have trouble seeing. Um, it's going to show that area so well and pronounced. So we'll dive into it, but we're going to start with the spool stand right, y'all so we're gonna install the spool holder this is an optional accessory for all my dx users out there so this one's gonna fit the um dx7 dx5 dx2000 um dx3000 15 100, anything that's DX. This is not going to fit the F series machines, unfortunately, or the G series this is only for the DX models. Okay. So these are all the goodies that you get. I don't know if you see it in the frame, but these are all the things you're going to get when you open this little box. Okay. So you're going to get the little uh, felt foam that's going to hold the big spools and everything. It's really, really easy to install y'all. You are just going to basically, so this guy is going to sure snap right into here. Okay, just like so. And then this is gonna just make it easier for you to install it. These little circles right here are gonna line up with the screw holders. So you'll see they're kind of like metallic-y in the back. And you're gonna line those two up and then you do get the two screws with this machine, uh, with this package. And these are what's gonna hold this in place. So I'm gonna screw this off camera cause I don't wanna waste your guys' time. But you simply just align these up and you screw that in. And I'll meet you in a second to show you how to put this Alrighty, guy on. so here it is. It's installed. It's really easy. This little guy is your anti vibration cone that goes on the back side of there. So, just for um, visual visual purposes let me grab a, a cone so obviously you could fit a nice big large cone here without a problem and then as far as installing that last bit you're just going to turn the machine to face you okay you're going to open your cover up and then here you get the little rod the metal rod this metal rod attaches to the back circle spot right here so just clicks right down in there it stays nice in position all right and then this is your little thread guide so the thread guide just latches on like so just snaps right in and then this guy is adjustable so you can set it up nice and tall to align with the spool that's in the back so this is a great alternative because it's really easy to remove okay it's just a great alternative for especially when you're traveling so this is going to be really nice for anybody who you know loves using large cones you can install this right onto your machine. Let's go over the feet that are the best when working with coated materials. So by coated materials, I mean something that has a finish to it. This is a little um, scrap of this delicious purple vinyl. It has a nice texture to it. So anything like uh, wax canvas, vinyl, leather, cork, um, anything that has a coating on it, it's nice to use non-stick feet. So there are a couple options out there. Um, there is the smooth presser foot that looks like so, all right? It's just it's this non-stick coating on it okay so it's all white and it's like this plastic foot that's used to help eliminate sticking that happens when you're using like your standard presser foot which is metal so this is going to just help glide over the fabric a lot smoother instead of sticking and giving you any kind of resistance this is just going to effortlessly glide as you're going the second foot that I always recommend you guys to have if you are someone who works with um, coated materials is going to be the roller foot. The roller foot is another really great foot to have in your stash. It has a little roller right here that physically rotates on your fabric. This is going to be awesome for someone who's working with like fabrics that have texture to them. So maybe you have a pebbly or a 
physical like bump to your vinyl that you're working with this is just going to help feed it through a lot easier it's almost like a walking foot for vinyl material so it has this little roller and it just literally rolls around really effortlessly I can like barely hold it in my palm um but it's also made out of that non-stick material so that way it doesn't stick to your fabric there's actually two little rollers on the back and then the one right there okay so these two are going to be the best feet to use for when you're working with coated materials. Hands down, you should have both in your collection and you should still be working with the three. It's like a little trio here. So you have your non-stick ones and your standard presser foot go a long way and it depends on what the project is, but these two are always gonna be great to work with. And I'm gonna show you an example of sewing on the vinyl so you can kind of see them in action and how beautiful the stitches come out when you're using a foot like this. Don't worry, the description, um, in this video, it's gonna have the links for all of these items today. So if you are wanting either one of these, don't worry, you can just simply um, go to the description and click on the link and it'll take you to our website so you can check out right away for those, okay? So let me put this on really quick. It's really simple, you're just gonna put your presser foot up. All right, you guys know how to change these out. It has this little button on the back side. It's like this little black um, little thing that's sticking out and you just push it in and your presser foot drops right down, all right? So I'll put on the smooth presser foot first and then it just simply, you just align it and it just snaps right in place like that. It's super easy to install, even easier than the TL machines, okay? So I'm just gonna fold this over in two and then put my presser foot down, make sure my stitch length is nice and extra beautiful. And so, oh, I have my foot on and just sew away a little bit. I have no resistance. I actually can hear that the machine is not thumping as much as it would. And oh my goodness, look at those stitches. They are delicious. Look at those individual stitch marks. That looks extraordinary front and back. It looks really awesome. So this is just one example. Let me put the roller foot on too so you guys can Alrighty, see that. So now I put that little roller foot on there too. You guys can see it in action. Just drop my presser foot down. And oh, I always keep forgetting to have that on. And those little rollers are physically rotating as I go, okay? Press your foot raises up and look at that. I mean, the stitches in both instances look so good, y'all. I mean, the definition is incredible. Along with the glidey, glide, glidey, glide 40 weight thread that I'm working with, this is a 100% polyester thread. And I mean, this just looks extraordinary y'all so definitely consider getting these two presser feet when you're working with coated materials because i promise you you'll have a lot of less resistance and your stitches will look amazing next one we're going to talk about is the narrow zipper foot this is a really cute little uh presser foot it is super super skinny um it's much smaller than the zipper foot that you traditionally get with any of the computerized machines it's very very skinny and of course you can put the needle to the left or to the right when you're working with this guy but this is going to be really really nice for attaching binding i know unfortunately there's nothing like the left compensating foot out there um so for like the tl machines so this is what i recommend to my computerized users to attach binding to get really close um stitch like uh, a lot seam allowance so let me show you how close it gets if i put it to the left or to the right so I have this foot attached on right now, but I wanna show you something very, very important. So I'm gonna turn my hand wheel a little bit. You see what happens? Uh-oh, it's gonna hit the foot. So you have to make sure you move the needle over either to the left or to the right, wherever you're trying to sew. So here's an example. If you're on the DX7, the dial is right here. It's the little zigzag. Okay, the zigzag stitch is going to move your needle left or right. Okay, so I'm gonna move it over. You see the needle moving. Hold on, I'm zooming back in. Okay. So it's moving, you see how it moves, and then I can move it to the other side as well. So I want it to be on the right side, so I'm just gonna move it. And then to see it, make sure everything is aligned perfectly, you can always turn your hand wheel to make sure, before you start sewing, always use your hand wheel to make sure that you have a good clearance when you're sewing. Okay, so now we're just going to align it up with the edge of this fabric. Let me find the straightest side for you guys. Okay, I'm just gonna line it up so you guys can see just how close it gets, all right? I'll try to do my best to sew straight since I'm kind of sewing at an angle. I'm just following the edge of the purple vinyl with the edge of this really skinny foot. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little cut. 
and you can see just how close this gets. This is going to be very, very close. It's not going to be an eighth. This is more of like a sixteenth or it's just like almost right on the edge. So this is going to be beautiful when you're attaching zippers in your purses to get that really nice to find top stitch. And I'm a little wonky right now, but it is really, really nice and close. Okay. I just want to uh, address this little bunching that's happening right here. Whenever you have this kind of bunching, when you're sewing, there's really nothing you can do about this. It actually gets worse when you're working with cotton, um, cotton threads. Since I'm working with a polyester, this will probably just untwine very, very like easy. But um, if you ever want to avoid this, you simply just have to pull your bottom thread and your top thread up at the same time. So that way there's nothing for it to get tucked in. Because when you have a thread cutter, what's happening here is that you cut the thread and you have this excess in the back. So it has to go somewhere. And more often than not, it just kind of gets tucked in. Sometimes it gets tucked into the stitch. Sometimes it just ends up perfectly. So to avoid any bunching and nesting uh try to work with the polyester thread or always pull your bobbin thread up okay so this is that narrow zipper foot it's also really great for attaching binding i have a little sandwich here that i'm going to show you how great it helps me when i'm attaching binding all right y'all so here i have my little quilt sandwich that i just was playing around with some free motion quilting and i was teaching um how to do machine binding um, so when I do my machine binding, I'll sew on the binding from the back and flip it to the front. Um, since I don't really use a computerized machine very much, I was like trying to think what I could recommend for you guys to use to help you get really consistent stitching the whole time. And I thought this narrow zipper foot would be great. So all you have to do is I ha you have to move the needle over to the left side now versus the right. And I'm just going to drop this down and I'm going to make my top stitch like a nice 3.4, 3.5. And I'm just going to sew and follow the edge right there with the foot. You see how I'm just following the yellow binding with the edge of the narrow zipper foot, okay? And I'm just gonna chug along. So it's gonna be really nice for helping you attach machine binding on your quilts, on bags especially too. And when you cut it, you'll see here that you get to sew really, really close to the edge, right? So it's just gonna keep you nice and consistent. And look how beautiful that is. I would not be angry if someone gave me a quilt and there was this delicious binding on it. So here is a perfect example of, you know, attaching binding in bags. It's a multi-purpose foot, great for getting really close to your zippers and attaching any binding to quilts, projects, bags, anything like that. It's gonna sew really nice and consistently right on that right, edge. So the next one that we're working with is the patchwork presser foot. And I think this is a really good presser foot um, to achieve multiple different seam allowances okay so this uh, presser foot comes with most um, machines so it comes with like the DX7 if you're not sure if it comes with your machine always check your manual on that first couple pages it always shows you your accessory sheet on what comes with the machine so always double check it all right but this is a really really good one so this presser foot gives you two seam allowances if you follow the inside it's going to give you an eighth and if you follow the outside it's going to give you a quarter and I'm going to demo it for you and I have my little um, handy dandy ruler here this is my absolute favorite ruler from creative grids it's a six and a half by one and a half and i swear by this ruler it is available in the Gigi's fabric shop app for you guys um if you didn't know we do have an app um and the app offers all the fabrics lots of notions bag kits quilt kits so much fun stuff um so you guys can check that platform out in the app or you can always visit Gigi's fabric shop dot live okay We'll have the link in the description. Yeah, the link will be there for you guys. You can always click it. Always refer to the description. So when you are ready to sew, um, you're going to have your edge here. And you're going to align it up with the inner border of this of this foot. So what I mean is these little teeth, these little fangs that are sticking out. When you follow the inside, okay, this, this, this part of it, so the left part of the little fang, that's going to give you an eighth of an inch. When you follow the outside of the foot with your fabric, it's going to give you a quarter inch. And I am going to show you with um, the ruler so you guys see the different seam allowances. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to align the presser foot up with the inner border, okay? And I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to try to stay as consistent as possible here. So you're just following the inside, okay? And when you follow the inside, that's going to give you a nice close stitch. And that stitch is going to be an eighth of an inch. You see that? So this first little marker is the eighth of an inch mark. You see in it? 
So it gives you an eighth of an inch. All right, so that's pretty cool because in top stitching, most of the time we're using an eighth of an inch. And then um, if you wanna follow it up by a quarter of an inch, you're more than welcome to. But this is also a great alternative for someone who's piecing and doesn't like having a guide and you like following the um, just the edge of the foot to give you a quarter inch, this foot's gonna do a great job of that. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm just gonna align the foot with the edge, the right edge of the foot, okay, with the fabric and we're going to sew it down so I can show you the differences in the seam allowance. Okay, so here I go. I'm following the outer part of the fang. Okay, so the right part, not the left part. And I'm just sewing away. Cut my thread. And then you have, this is what we just stitched out. So now I'm going to take my ruler here and I'm going to measure it out. And you see how that gives you a quarter of an inch. So there is the quarter of an inch, there is the eighth of an inch. So the eighth of an inch is when you follow the left inner part of the little fang, and then the outer right part of the fang is going to give you a quarter inch seam allowance, which is just awesome because it does two in one. So imagine you're top stitching on a bag or something. This foot's gonna do both of those things at the same time, and it's just so easy. It's really, really easy to follow, and the stitches look really, really nice and defined. So that is one of my also favorite feet to use, especially for multi-purpose, like top stitching and things like that. So you might wanna consider getting this one or double checking your collection to make sure you already don't have it. Next up that I'm gonna talk about is going to be the area stitch magnifier. I think this is such a good tool to just attach to your machine, especially if you have a hard time maybe seeing or you're doing very detailed, intricate work on a bag and you wanna make sure everything is nice and crisp and aligned. This is gonna be great for not just the bag maker, but for everybody, quilting, anything where you wanna really have control and see your precision in an area. I'm gonna show you guys how to install this. Alrighty, next up, we're gonna do the stitch area magnifier. And this is what it looks like. It's really, really easy to install. All that you have to do for this is underneath, right by the needle threader, there's going to be a little hole right here. And I'm gonna use my scissors to just to show you exactly where it is. It's right here. Okay, so there's literally an opening right here. You're gonna make sure you put the, the prong up, okay? You're gonna insert it into that hole and it just clicks right into place. Then this guy swings down so you can amplify that area. It's a little magnifier so you can really see all the details. So here's just like an example. That is pretty cool. So look at that. You can like really get up close and personal with that area. Make sure you're achieving the grave detail that you want. Or even if you have a hard time seeing, this is just nice to amplify that area. So this is a stitch area magnifier. This is an optional accessory. Um, and like I said, it's gonna be in the description of this video for you guys today. This is awesome and it does move out of the way. It can swing down and you know, you can position it exactly how you would like. So this is a really good one just for all kinds of sewers and just everyone in general who wants to have a really nice view. Last but not least in this video, guys, we're gonna talk about needles. I'm gonna give you just a quick little run through of some really must have needles that I would recommend for my bag makers out there. Um, but I think we're gonna do a video like going in greater detail about needles because it's something I touch base on a lot. Um, so we're just gonna do a quick little overview of some of the most common needles. All right, so as you can see, I have a little variety of our Schmetz needles. We love the Schmetz needles. I know it can be confusing sometimes, especially when you open your computerized Juki machine, you do get a pack of organ needles. You can use organ needles, you can use Schmetz needles. They just have to be the standard home sewing needles, um, you know, just the standard regular system of needles. Um, nothing crazy to them. They're like the 130 system, the 130N, nothing too crazy to it. Just like the regular standard home sewing needles that have a flat side, okay? So the Schmetz one that we carry on our website, there's no confusion because these will fit all the TL machines. They'll fit all the computerized machines on our website. It's very, very easy. Let's start off with the Microtex needles. The Microtex needles are an extra sharp needle. I love reading the description on the back for you guys. It says use these when you're working with um, microfibers, polyester, silks, foils, faux leather, coated materials, and batiks. Very thin, cute point. Um, creates beautiful top stitching and perfectly straight stitches. So the really nice thing about Microtex needles is they're very, very sharp. So your stitch quality is gonna look amazing, especially when you're working with vinyl because you want it to make a nice clean cut um, and fill that hole out with the thread. So the Microtex needles are beautiful. You can find those on the website. Next up, we have the top stitching needles. The top stitch needles are really great for top stitching your bags and quilts and free motion quilting because they have an extra large eye. So it creates, make a larger loop 
So a lot of the time, the biggest complaint when people are working with vinyls is that they're getting skip stitches and it's not being able to latch through. That's because their needle is too small, okay? And you want something that has a larger eye, especially in the top stitch needles, this really specializes in that extra large eye. So even in the 9014, it has a very large eye. So you can create that loop and get that beautiful stitch quality that you want. So I would highly encourage these for top stitching in your bags and projects like that. And they do come in a variety of sizes. So 9014, 116, and things like that. Next up, we have the vinyl needles. These are the super non-stick needles. There is two versions on the website. So this is the variety pack, which is pretty nice because you get the 7010, the 8012, uh, two 8012s, and then a 9014 and 116. So nice little variety pack for just keeping them in your stash. I would definitely recommend always having one of these as a backup. So working with like vinyl and coated materials, this is gonna be a must have, especially even when you're doing zippers. If you're using any double-sided uh, zipper tape, um, you know, to help you make sure everything stays in place. Anything sticky like that, this is gonna help avoid that, especially in wax canvas too, because it can gunk up and things like that. So great for coated materials as well. And then if you're just looking for one particular size, we do have the 9014s, the 116s, and I believe the 8012s on the website. These are just the one size single pack. So these are the super universal, super non-stick needles that are made out of that special coating to help um, reduce resistance not have that stickiness just help with these specialty kind of fabrics like vinyl and things like that because this is so specialty fabrics and all these little things add up to make beautiful stitch quality i promise you guys so using this with like the smooth presser foot that's going to be a, a match made in heaven really so these are great needles for you guys to use do not forget to check out the description on this video um it's going to have everything broken down for you guys so you guys can purchase any of these awesome accessories um like i said thank you so much for being here and make sure you guys subscribe and like our channel uh, we appreciate you guys so much and all your support um it goes a long way and we post videos every week um drop some ideas of what you guys want to see because we do listen to your suggestions and we love to give you guys what you want to see so um if you have any tips any ideas any any wisdom you want to share feel free to comment below and thank you so much for being here you can feel free to check out jukijunkies.com that is our website where you can check out all the machines all the parts and even the thread that i used today um and then our customer service number is 813-661-9000 and then there's Gigi's personal cell too that you guys can always feel free to call um and the email is sewing machines with an s 411 at gmail.com so again thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time Thanks for watching. If you guys haven't already, hit that show more button down here in the description to look at all the different links that we talked about in this video for all the different accessories. There's also links to videos that might relate to this video if you have any more questions pertaining to this topic. Also, one of my favorite links is right here, shop our amazing fabric selection. You can go to our, one of our websites where it has all the amazing fabric, notions, and quilt kits that you can shop. If you haven't already, Scroll down, drop a comment if you have any questions. We love inter we love interacting with our customers. And if you would like, just leave an uplifting comment for Boki or me. We love reading all the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more weekly content every week.